it's me, Erin. Thanks for joining us on the More Love Podcast. Do not tell Rebecca, but this podcast is about empathy. She likes people to think she's dead inside, but the truth is she's a big time feeler who has truly helped me uncover that empathy is my superpower. Here she comes. Hey, bestie. Hi, love. What are you doing? Oh, just getting ready to host a podcast. A podcast? About what? A life. Our life as best friends who are more like sisters. Ah, yay! I love us and I can't wait to share our stories with the world. Especially the ones that involve us pushing each other, right? To be our most authentic selves. Oh, man. Okay. I have a weird empathy thing that came up the other day that I'm pretty positive you've never felt in your entire life, and I thought maybe I'd share it. Okay, what? I have a hard time throwing out an empty tube of toothpaste after the toothpaste is gone because I feel bad that it has done its job and is no longer here with us. Okay. Have you felt that ever? Okay. I mean, well, have you ever that's felt kind that? of the same as when I didn't want to throw away the empty oil. Okay. The set wouldn't be complete. Oh, so it was more about the set. Right. Mine is, we've been together a while, Mm, you know, and I have pushed that from the bottom and I've tried to get as much out of that. Started at the bottom, now we're here. (laughs) What? Started at the bottom, now we're here. I mean. I tried to get as much out of it as possible. I feel like there's always still some toothpaste left in the tube and mm -hmm. then I feel badly for that because that. That had a purpose. So you're and not it's so not cheap that you seen. chop the top off and then would scrape. Oh, I've on never the done inside. that. No, because that would be out of the right never way to do I've never thought about that. That's right. never right. once occurred to me. Oh, I've You've done that. You've never felt that way about the toothpaste ever. You're all done with the toothpaste and you're like, boop, toss. Mm-hmm. Scott. In fact, sometimes I'm like, I don't even like this toothpaste. Gone. Oh, boy. Yeah. Scott. Yeah. You ever had this? Uh, never. In my life, have I ever even given toothpaste more of a thought than we're out? Okay. I need more. Wow. I'm it's, trying to think if there is something. I still feel bad that I don't buy the cinnamon crust toothpaste anymore because I love it so much, but it doesn't make my breath feel fresh. And then I just don't think it does what it's supposed to do. And so then I feel badly that if I don't buy it, no one will. And then the, the cinnamon toothpaste is going to go off the shelf. Jesus. That happened to the orange flavor that Mark really loved. We can't get that anymore because not enough people bought it. Orange toothpaste? Yeah. That, it was an orange zest. That's stupid. Well, he loved it. <laughs> he loved it. Not anymore. I also felt that way about Timbits at, at Tim Hortons, the salted caramel Timbits. I think I even have a Facebook post about it where I'm like, if these things go away, it's not because of me. I did my part. Mm. The rest of you, I don't know what you did, but... I don't think they would ever they're go away. They're so good. Gone. They're gone. They're not here anymore. I think anymore. they're seasonal. No, they don't never they never came back. They never mm-hmm. made a comeback. Hmm. There's not the, is, is there Tim anything Horton's still in business in general? Oh, yeah. No one's ever there. Especially in Canada. Eh? <laughs> well, maybe in Canada, but no one is ever at the Tim Hortons because the Dunkin' Donuts always right build across, across the, street. the street and the Dunkin' Donuts line is always long and I'm one of those people that it's like if I can't get in I'm, the Tim Hortons sucks oh you don't like the taste of I Tim I don't like Horton. anything about Tim Hortons oh they also wanted to know if you wanted butter with your cider oh I know what yeah we, yeah <laughs> they're we were going through the drive through one time because we were going to Canada look how far off the screen you are right now <laughs> I'm not <laughs> this there you go there you are and um, there you are I gotta move over here then okay so Remember we were going to Thank we, you, we passed Cochram. <laughs> is that is that outfit that you're wearing under that sweatshirt? Is that from like your your naughty drawer? <laughs> it's not it's not an outfit. It's a sports bra. It's just a bra? Yeah. What's under what's under it? Nothing. Her boobs. No, I mean, is it a shirt or it's just no, a bra? It's just a sports bra. But it's not from the naughty drawer? <laughs> it's not no, where, it's, it's not where my D V D black worm is. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> What? It's a <laughs> and I don't have your DVD okay, black worm. Whatever. She you claims know I stole my porn. porn. 
she claims I stole her porn for, for years. It's been ever. at least a 20 year I'm 100% claim. positive. Still can't find that I'm beast. I'm so interested in what <laughs> autistic porn looks like. <laughs> Black worm. You can black you can figure worm? out what that's what that's about. Jesus. Yeah. I did not take your black worm porn. Okay, whatever. You know you watch it every Wednesday. <laughs> My D V D player. That that bra, it the top of it a hundred percent looks like it is something that you buy at a porn shop. This was Jareen's. That didn't fit her anymore. Oh, so she okay. gave it to me. <laughs> that just got awkward. <laughs> that just got even more awkward. Yeah. No, it's just All right, it's sorry. Bad. Okay, continue. Um what were we talking about? Oh. Toothpaste, Tim Hortons. You hate Tim oh, Hortons. Oh, Cockram. Cockram Road. Yeah, so we were, we just, we just passed the Cockram Road. This is, okay, what? this was back, this was back when, um, <laughs> this was back when, um, we didn't, we, I think we had smartphones, but no GPSs and that GPS that Garmin you, Garmin Nuvi. Right. You, you had the Garmin on Nuvi, your, you put it on your windshield. Right. And because we were resident directors, I splurged and yeah. bought the international yeah, one. Thank God. So we could go to thank Ikea God, because Canada. we didn't know what was going to happen. Do you remember <laughs> yes, that? Yes. We get into Canada and I'm like, Rebecca, what if this doesn't know, work? What if you didn't, what if you had to enable what? international map? And we didn't and we print didn't. out our map quest. And we don't have the map quest directions. Right. We don't have I know. cell phones. We were very, and we couldn't use cell phones and in Canada. I remember. Oh yeah. Cause it cost you extra. That's right. I remember the minute you and I, you and I, it was like Y2K. It was like Y2K. We were all just staring like this. Please, please, And do you please, remember the please. computer screen looked like Oregon Trail? Oh, it was yeah. so small. It was, and, and, it then, was, and the little car, yes. the little red car, <laughs> going along. And you could change it. It could either be a car or like right. a truck. A truck or, and the voices could change. Oh, yeah. But our favorite was when we discovered that the names of the streets oh, yeah. would come Showed up. Right and up. all of a sudden, you we both, cock came right out. Came yeah. Right, and we both went, does that say cock? Does that say cock? Yeah. Cock Ram cock Road? Ram. So that was, yes. And then we decided we needed to go to Timmy Ho's because that's the only thing there. Right. And we go through the drive through and she says, I would like, how? what was the cadence? Because she I, goes, you want cider butter, butter with your with cider. Your cider. You must have I asked said, for. I said I would like a hot apple cider. Right. A blueberry and muffin. A blueberry muffin. And butter. And could you please get some, have some butter. But apparently all she heard she was. she said. <laughs> You want butter with your cider? That's what <laughs> like, she said. Huh? And I looked at you. I said, no. I would like a blueberry muffin with some butter and a cider. <laughs> yeah. So Please move forward. Day. Please right. move forward. So okay. That was our experience. Every time at Timmy, Timmy House, House. Every time we go in there. Just butter with your cider. You some butter with your cider. So then we finally get to the Ikea. Mm-hmm. And the reason we had to go to Ikea <laughs> was because I opened my wedding presents. Has, has she ever told this story, Scott? No. Okay, <laughs> this is great. So we had, so I get married. We have to go, or no, I get married, we open our wedding presents. I'm pretty sure Philip and I didn't open them. I'm pretty sure Aaron and I opened them. And we're sitting there and I got this one. I got a vase with the bamboo and... I think there was something else with it. I don't, think so. I don't remember. I don't think so. Maybe it was two vases with two bamboo. It might have been. And you're in your like, um, I think we can do better. So I think we I think we looked online and we discovered it was from IKEA. And I'm pretty sure I never heard of IKEA. And Wait, you were like, we Oh my stop? god, we have to can go. Can we stop? Can we stop? Let me tell you, there's two versions of this podcast. Okay. There's the version that really happened. And then there's the first version because that, immediately that I'm Rebecca thinking, tells me because she listening? doesn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Who wants to make it okay? Listen, All right, I, don't tell care. I don't care who, hap- who happened to be a part of this scenario. We really thank you for your gifts to Rebecca and my wedding. It was a really great time. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for thinking of us. This shit is hilarious. And I hope you think this is funny. We're not making fun of you. This shit is just hilarious. Hilarious. Okay. okay and if you, you can't tell hang it with it, then don't be on the podcast because this is, this is real. Can you tell it? Because this is, this is me trying to be empathetic. Like, hey, so then Aaron is like, I don't know. Maybe we could do better. Absolutely not is what Aaron said. And so what happened was she takes these vases. I do think vases, it was two. I think it was two of two. them with the with the bamboo in it. Yeah. This was back now, this is 2008 when this was like a big deal. And she's she's moving these <laughs> presents aside and holds it up and just looks at me like this, just glares at me with these. I said, 
what the fuck is that? <laughs> what the fuck is that? She goes, it's my bamboo. <laughs> I said, why do you have bamboo stalks? Stop it. She said, it was a gift. <laughs> my <laughs> wedding gift. I said, was there something else with it? Or was like that? <laughs> that was it. The gift. And she said, it's, that's the gift. Mm-hmm. And I said, from where? I think and you... the sticker on the bottom <laughs> of it says Ikea. But I never heard of Ikea. And you had. Yes. I said, well, I've always wanted to go to Ikea. Right. So let's bring that back. Right. And then you can turn that in and you can get yourself a dish or right. like a casserole. You explained, I think or, we went on the AOL. Yeah, and looked oh, up absolutely, and looked up what IKEA was, and then that's yes. when I realized we don't have international GPS. So I right. used my wedding money to right. buy the Garvin right. Nuvi right. splurge. And, and to be fair, for the international the, package, the vases with the bamboo <laughs> were what ultimately got us to go to IKEA for Correct. the first time. So we were really thankful for that. And Correct. our goal was we were just going to go in and we were going to say we're going to get the money for this on a gift card right. and then we're going to go shopping. And we're, we're going to go no, shopping. No, we're going to go on a shopping spree. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Because Ikea is fancy. You, yes. Ikea is fancy, fancy and it's... fancy, but also a little bit like cheap because no, we, we had didn't. the conversion no. rate Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, but we didn't know what we Ikea knew we really were going to get more for our money right. We Ikea. thought Ikea was like this... But because what I needed to clarify there was that what, what Rebecca said, Aaron was like, well, you know, maybe we could turn those in and see what else is there. That is okay, not what not Aaron what said. That's Aaron's like, what, what the f*** is that? Yeah, right, right. So we get in the car. We go through the Tim Hortons. We get our cider with our butter. <laughs> we discover Cockram Road. And then as soon as we are crossing the border... We're waiting, 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 waiting. Right. Please turn, please turn, please turn. We don't and know it, what to do. We're right. too far in at this point. And right. then it showed up and we celebrated, celebrated like it was 1989. That's right. Then we decided every time we see a Canadian flag, yep. we were going to say, Oh, Canada! Every time. And <laughs> every that, time we saw the Canadian flag. So we're driving, 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 driving. I think driving, we driving, even driving, saluted. Driving. I'm sure we did. I'm sure we saluted. Oh, Canada! Canada! And we every had time. to do it no matter what. No yes. matter what. And if yes. somebody started with the, oh, you just yes, jump that's in. because they saw the flag before Very you did. Important. Someone was in the middle of a story. Didn't matter. Boom. Oh, Canada. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. So I'm pretty sure we did it as we're driving through getting carded or whatever. When yeah, you go when through customs. And then they didn't like that. No. They didn't like that at all. No. I'm like, excuse me, sir. We have to do this. N- n- no. <laughs> so. No. They, they are not there for any of that. Correct. Correct. So. We're going through the Garvin's work and thank freaking God, saluting, having a having a great time. We finally get to the destination. Yeah. We get there. We're so excited. Yeah. Wait. Now I'm Here we go. nervous. Aaron, this is the de- Aaron's not <laughs> nervous about certain oh, things. I can't wait to turn this in. Right. Get my so, gift card. We decide. Right. We Here decide. I am. Right. We pull in. Huge Canada flag. Singing it on the way in. Oh, Canada. Get in. And I say, what's the plan? She's like, just follow me. She goes up to the lady. Was it a lady or a man? It was a it was a man. A man. Okay. Good up there. And she's like, We just got married. <laughs> we just we just got married and um we got this as a we gift got and we would like wedding. to exchange this. Mm-hmm. Then what happens? And it's okay if you just want to give us a gift card or yeah, right. whatever that's for right. for this, but um we just wanted to turn this in because we're gonna get something else. She's mm-hmm. like, Oh, not a problem. She picks up the Is bottom. Does she know? Him. Him. Okay. He, okay. He, okay. He, he, he okay. picks up the bottom. Scans, scans it. it. Mm-hmm. Picks up the other bottom. Mm-hmm. Scans it. <laughs> you okay. gotta swallow. I gotta you gotta swallow. swallow before I say this next part. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting at this moment. I'm looking around. I'm looking around because I'm in awe. We're, we're in a um, minimum. Minimum we're getting back. Minimum. 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Minimum. Oh, but we have two. Bucks. We have two because have this, two. Is, this is a vase. 50 bucks. This is a vase. Minimum 50 bucks. I'm there like a kid at an ice cream oh, we're, store. we're so excited. Cannot we're wait. So, we are going on a spree. Cannot wait. Uh-oh. Next thing you know, choo choo, that's the cash register opening. Seven bucks. She, he. <laughs> he. Who is he? He goes into the little Stop coin, it. the coin drawer area. <laughs> no. <laughs> Pick something up. And holds it out for me. Right. Now I put my hand out because I'm a little confused at this moment about what's happening. <laughs> right. And he puts one quarter in my hand. That's 25 cents. One I thought she was a Canadian quarter. quarter. <laughs> and I 
I'm looking at him. My hand is outreached. Like Waiting this. for the dollar bills. We're waiting. We thought we got the change I'm looking first. at him. He's handing me the quarter. <laughs> I'm confused about why this is the beginning and the end of this transaction. <laughs> and he says, there's your refund. It's 25 cents. I said, sir, <laughs> this is 25 cents. He said, that's correct. <laughs> I believe usually they're 25 cents a piece. But right now they're buy one, get one. And because you don't have your receipt, I can only give you what they're worth right now. I, I look I'm, over at Rebecca oh. and she has her legs crossed <laughs> in pissing position. <laughs> Don't she piss on my seat. Is she is howling. She is I can't on, I'm holding this corner <laughs> up. I can't and I'm like what is this? Is is he serious? I can't. This man, man, this man, he's just, just smiling, doing yeah, his job. And I turn to her doing. and I see a Canadian flag. And all I say is, <laughs> oh, Shot a shopping spree. I, I said, "You want this, or can I keep it? <laughs> can I keep this? You want it? Can I freaking keep this? Oh I can't. God. Time to go home. We don't have any cash to spend. Oh I my god! Good thing I bought that newbie. I can't. <laughs> not good thing you spent the extra on the Canadian map. So someone gave you a fifty cent wedding present. Correct. I gotta know who this is. Correct. We'll tell you after. <laughs> Correct. And I, you know what? And I'm so thankful that this person did because oh, we would that never have a story. one of the best stories. That was such a great event. Not only that, it but then we so decided great. to make it a trip. Like, yeah. it wasn't at the time we saw Ugly Betty. Yeah. We, that was the you time know, you gave stood the in front of the tallest, tallest man, man in, in the world. Yeah. yeah. Like, there was, there was a lot. We went to the zoo. Yeah. That was the time that we were in the hotel room, hotel room, mm-hmm. and you said, "If we're going to rent a movie, we really got to watch it." And I said, "Instead of what, make it out all night? Right. Like, what did you think we were going to do?" Right, and that was I think that was one of the first times we did a sleepover. Yep, and I talk so much, oh my and you're God, like Scott, trying to Scott, hang. I was you're like trying. This is that was <laughs> legit. Probably one of the first times we ever slept in the same room, and I, I got to a delirious point where she just would not stop talking. And then I don't know what happened next, but right. I just remember that she's like, "So last night I was in the midst of talking to you about something." But that's and you why fell I right said, asleep. "That's why I said we have to watch it because I knew if we weren't talking, there was a chance we'd fall asleep, and then it'd be me that we I would spend fall asleep. The money. That's what you were worried about. You were wide awake. It was like you had just had a cappuccino or something five minutes before. I don't sleep." Is incredible, oh. and you were anxious because right. we were just like sleeping somewhere right. else. Was and that was that the same time we went into the jaws of scary dungeon? Nope, that was a different time. <laughs> that's when we that's when we went back. And you remember the clutch of my car? I was like, I think we took the broke. bottom out. Something yeah. just broke. I that was that okay. was your Civic that smelled like Charles. Charles, yeah, my cat Charles smelled he released so his bad. Anal glands in the back seat of sure the car. Did. Sure did. Oh, he got smelled. so scared when it was so Sweet hot. Boy, there's Charles. He's, just, <laughs> he's 25 pounds. He's a big boy. He released his anal glands in the back sure seat did. of my car because he got so scared. I know. And then whenever it got hot, you would always smell anal gland yep. in the back of the Civic. Sure did. And so that we would always <laughs> say, "Hey, Charles." Sure did. That's the same car that I'm pretty sure. It in your um, RD parking spot, someone carved the word fuck into it. No, listen to me. <laughs> listen to me. It wasn't my RD parking spot. It, it was when I lived in the meadows. It was the meadows. And the kid who lived <laughs> next door to me By the was way, part does of everybody St. Know, Joseph's Villa. But does everybody know that, ironically, I lived in the meadows when we didn't know I each know. other? I know. And you moved into my I know. same exact apartment. I know. It's, what? It's a, a yes. classic, it's a classic example of Swear how... To God. 
Remember? And then we almost met each other at Apropos looking yes. for our dresses. Back in like prom. Destined. Back destined. We, bought our, we bought our dresses at the same place in a totally different town that no one lives near. There was a kid who lived <laughs> next to me at the Meadows and he was a part of St. Joseph's Was Villa. he the same one that offered you 50 grand to drive across the... Nope, that was a different okay. guy. Okay. So, <laughs> so this guy, he was a delinquent. He was a juvenile delinquent mm-hmm. and he must have gotten real mad at his mom and I always parked in the number one parking spot next to where the door was to get into the apartment. That's where I And here I, I am, mental health counselor, going to school, mm-hmm, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I come out to my car the next day and it, it, it written in my car in complete keyed along the side of my car, it says, fuck, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and it, went, it went from the front of the car to the, to back. the, to the back of the yep. car. It crossed the door. It crossed, they had to do all three I panels. I swear it was in and the I RD said parking to you, space. It says, fuck, fuck across <laughs> my door because I immediately knew that it was that kid mm-hmm. but like there's no cameras at that time and there was no way but who the heck else was gonna do that right mm-hmm. so here I am driving to campus <laughs> and he's like hi would I like to see you for some therapy my car says fuck fuck it's fine <gasps> it's totally fine then there was another guy when I lived there mm-hmm. Ian oh and Ian had a cat named Booter oh and Ian came over to my apartment and offered me fifty thousand dollars oh that's the guy to drive a car mm-hmm. from New York State to some place in was it California I think it, yeah. it was some other I didn't know you then and now here you can't hit me with that I know. because but was I'm, he the seat <laughs> Did you want to be the seat? Is that what I'm the- neurodivergent. <laughs> I see that as a financial opportunity. Okay. So like you, you're really taking advantage of me here. Mm-hmm. This is not okay. And then I, I I think enough. This is one of those moments where like your parents come into play and you were like, if, if my dad was here right now, what would he be thinking? My mm-hmm. dad would ask some more questions. So I'm like, well, why? Mm-hmm. What, what are what are we bringing? What what is so important that we're bringing the fifty thousand dollars? Oh no, you're not bringing fifty thousand dollars. Well, what am I bringing? Mm-hmm. Well, we're not really going to get into that. But just here's the thing: if you get pulled over, you can never say we had this conversation, and also <laughs> hope they don't look in the trunk. Mm. What is back there? Right. Oh my yeah. God! Ding ding ding! Don't do it. So here I am. Did I still think about it? Sure yeah. Did. I did. Mm -hmm. I thought to myself, 50 grand is a lot of money. I'm a very good driver. Mm -hmm. My chance of being pulled over is relatively low. Mm -hmm. But if I go to jail for being a drug mule Mm -hmm. and John Halligan has to come to that place Mm -hmm. and and bail me out or or like tell the courts, you know, what happened here, he ain't coming. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm. He ain't coming. Mm-hmm. And then I'm the girl who was in the master's counseling program with fuck fuck written on her car. Who also who went ended to jail. up going to jail because she was a drug mule and mm-hmm. really was like, oh, yeah, she didn't know. I swear, guys, I didn't know. Mm-hmm. I just thought this was the thing. Yeah. That Long doesn't, story that doesn't short, work in court. I said no. Yeah. Well, I said, I don't think this is an opportunity for me. Thanks for thank thinking you. of me. Can I play try, with your cat? Try so and so down the street. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, the guy next door, the guy next door, he's a juvenile delinquent. I don't know if he has his license yet, but he's not, he's on board. My he only care. My you only. Should've, you should have just got in the car and drove over to the police station and say, hey, so this guy yeah, just right. gave me, fi- just wants to give me 50 grand to drive this car to California. Uh, what's in the trunk? He said, don't look in the trunk. There's something in the trunk. I'll give you his name. Right. Or and better yet, reward. better yet, excuse me, Mr. Policeman, I have something in my car that I will share with you for 75 grand. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah that's this a good idea. Not a good Let's idea. Let's see how this goes. Not a good idea. My only story of the Meadows is um, a bunch of us got super drunk one night and scaled the fence around the pool mm-hmm. and went skinny dipping. Oh, okay. And somebody called the cops. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. They didn't like that. They didn't like that. Didn't like we had, they we had a scale of getting out. It was mm-hmm. it was not a good time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's I my only story. One of my um, greatest accomplishments in life is never living in an apartment again. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I love living a- in an apartment. Apartment living was. Did you ever have kids and live in an apartment? No. no. <clears throat> but we did have Aaron's cat. So when Aaron moved out of so Aaron took a Aaron had a colonoscopy. We were just talking about that. So Aaron had a colonoscopy and I was her babysitter. Not a good idea. No. <laughs> Not no. a good idea. So no. I was her babysitter and I had to pick her up from the hospital mm-hmm. where she had it done. And they didn't 
t- right. They mm-hmm. didn't tell me that she would be farting constantly. <laughs> and we were dying, dying laughing <laughs> as the guy's trying to explain protocol of what we need the to doctor do. Just the doctor. The doctor. in there going through all my, I keep saying, I'm sorry, sir. Right. I have no control. He's right. like, and he's fine. like, he's fine. Because it's that's fine. normal, right? It's very normal. So we are dying. And she's like on these drugs or whatever. So I finally, we get her in the car. We get back to the dorm. And I set her all up and I basically like the rules were don't leave her alone and don't make any rash decisions. Mm -hmm. Those were the only two rules. Yeah. So I set her all up and I say, I got to go to staff meeting. I'll be back in an hour. So I leave her alone, go to the staff meeting and I think she's going to take a mat. I come back. This bitch applied for three jobs and applied for an apartment. And I'm like, what? (laughs) She's like, I'm going to get these jobs. I'm like, okay. So sure enough, she goes, I got oh, no. and, and you submitted your um, doctorate application. That's right. That was ready to go, but we probably didn't review it That's at right. least 30 times, but 25 right. was enough. Right. <laughs> so she submitted that. And I'm like, okay, okay. So next week, gets the job, gets the apartment, moves on with their life, right? Gets accepted to the doctoral program. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so this was right after... Right after our Canadian trip, yeah, when I had just gotten married and all this stuff, and um, you were basically, I think I said to you, Philip and I are considering getting pregnant, and you're like, no, you're not. That's going to ruin my life. <laughs> and right. so right. I'm pretty sure you did all of that, and then I announced my pregnancy. Yeah. And so we move you into the apartment over in where I live now. Yeah. And so we move you all in. Again, this is so ironic, right? So- we have all these past experiences. We, I move you into, pretty sure it was just me and you who moved you into your apartment. Yeah. And you had Charles. Yes. At the time. Yeah. So we, we decide we're going to take apart the closet door. Yeah. To build a, like a cat litter sanctuary. Box area. Litter box there, all the yeah. things, right? So that is our closest to having kids. Okay. So we get her all set up. We get her in here. She does all the things. She's Do you there. remember how proud we were oh, when we got that door off? The door off? Oh, we sure were. We that was that that was the same we day that we some beers right there. Cheers some beers, and that was the day we put on the booty shorts and put your that was black a different suction day. cup dildo. That was a different day. That was a different day. Oh, but same apartment, same apartment. Right. But she was she bought a you couch. You can't handle both those bought, things in one day. It wasn't you a different take day? off the closet doors, and you're oh, like, this is okay, it. Okay. This is it. So I don't then, think I can handle all these stories in one episode. But yeah, continue. I know, I know. So then she got. So then when she bought the couch, pretty sure your parents bought you the couch from Sears. And it that was, was Value City. Okay, Value City. She was getting it delivered, and so of course, me and her in the booty shirts, and we suction cup her. Different day. Her dildo. Okay, different, different day. day, but we still did this. We right. suction cupped the dildo to the nightstand when the guys brought in the couch. Right. Sure did. So anyway, that's <laughs> that's that apartment. So she so I'm pregnant in the dorm and I realize that I don't want to have a baby in the dorm. So don't want to do that. Right. It's not not a vibe. Right. You get a different job. Right. You get you get a different job and you buy a condo. Right. And you say to me, I I think this is all in our timeline. You say to me, I just bought a condo. I don't know. I'm going to have to sublet my apartment. And I said, good news for you. I just got a job and I need an apartment. Yeah. So I <laughs> right. move, me and Philip move into his apartment. So I got a, I got a job, got pregnant, had to move into an apartment and we bought a house all within a couple of weeks of each other. Mm-hmm. And ironically, you were living Round the corner from the house I bought. Legit two minute drive. Two minute. So I said, this is perfect. I need your apartment. You give me your apartment. So I move into your apartment. We move you into your condo. Philip and I decide, well, since you're pregnant, let's gut our house and redo it while we don't have, well, because we had to stay in our lease until I think August, which was when Taylor was due anyway. So we do that. We're redoing our house. And... Philip's dad passes away unexpectedly while I'm pregnant and the whole thing. So it was very sad. After the funeral, we go back to the apartment we're subletting from you. You're on the second floor Mm -hmm. and he goes to have a cigarette and goes out onto the back deck Mm -hmm. and falls through the wooden stairs. That's right. In his suit. That's right. Remember? That's right. He falls. His his leg. It it rotted. (laughs) The stairs rotted and he fell right through the port, through the deck. (laughs) His leg fell through and he had his suit on. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. 
And then do you remember when you we took all of the cabinets off my kitchen and made you paint them? Oh, so in my worst. living room. Yeah. That yeah. was the worst. Good times. <laughs> yeah. 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 So anyway, we never had kids in the apartment, but we've shared numerous apartments. It's really weird. Did this all start from me talking about the toothpaste? Mm-hmm. Wow. I don't know how we got into that. Yeah, it's, I, you know, this is, <laughs> this is it. Was that this episode? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I don't even know. We lived in an apartment with, we had two kids, two little kids. They were a year and they were 13 months apart. So they were both in diapers. And uh, there was a, <laughs> there was a group of people that lived in the building next to us, but like they're, they were next door, but it was a different building. And um, we used to call them the clowns oh. because there were like 150 of them living in this one oh. uh, apartment and they were all from Tennessee. Oh, okay. Um, and so, yeah. And so they would, they all got in and they were, um, they were really kind of, it seemed like it was a meth den. Oh, probably. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And that yeah. was, that was our, yeah. that was, that's what started yeah. my de- decision to move out of Florida and come back up. Here. Okay. Well, okay. A Florida okay. apartment living, I'm going to assume is different than New York par- apartment. I living. just there remembered. Some constant, there you know, constants, but yeah. By you just saying Tennessee. I just remembered that at this conference I was at last week, you know, you got all the vendors and were there. Amazing. The people in Maryland, specifically people from the PTA, are amazing human beings. Oh. Very sweet, very loving community. They're very much the the mindset of all of our children are all of our children. Mm-hmm. It's not your children and my children. We need to protect all of our children. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, I'm one of the vendors in this group and it's a it's a lull where all these attendees are at their sessions. And so this woman who's sitting next to us, who's phenomenal, we got her contact information. She's hilarious. Okay. And then it's me and Renee. And then it's two other tables across from us. And this one table across from us, I do not know how we got on this conversation, but she starts talking about when they talked to their children about reproduction Mm. and where babies came from Mm. actually i think it was because the girl who was sitting next to me was saying that her eight-year-old had all these questions and that she could not dodge the questions because Mm -hmm. she would answer the question and then the the girl would ask a more in-depth question and then she was like i need a minute i i I don't i don't i'm not ready for this Mm -hmm. right and Mm -hmm. so this woman who we think was from alabama okay Starts to say how she's told her daughters. Wait, I have a question. Do you assume she's from Alabama because of the accent or are there other implications? Will you tell me after you hear the rest of the story? Okay. 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 So this is a very specific place. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this woman next to us is talking about how she had to take a beat, you know, and tell her daughter about where babies come from or whatever. And then the woman across from us starts to say, well, I had to have these conversations with my daughter as well. And thankfully, very, very early on in life, somehow the topic of a seed that grows in your belly came up as the you know, the metaphor that we continued to use. And it was really beautiful because when someone would say, well, how did that baby get there? She would say, seeds, God plants seeds in your belly. And then those seeds grow Mm -hmm. and turn into into babies. That's Mm -hmm. a yeast infection. (laughs) And so she said, my, my daughter was always very fearful Later on in life, she tells me that she was very fearful of like, was God going to pick me? Mm. Like, is she going to put that? I'm not ready. Is the seed going to be in me? When's I mean, the that's seed a legitimate be in me? This is right. That's the a legitimate be fear in with not knowing yeah. facts. Exactly. Yeah. So, so she's going on and saying that like they talked about that. And then when she got her period, you know, they talked about that as another stage in the growing process and whatever. But what she said next <laughs> what, what cracks me up is that the woman next to me and Renee, when we're accounting it, like the next day, recounting it, like talking about it again, they go, at this moment, y- your energy shifted so hard that you just like grabbed your phone and turned your back to the conversation and did not participate anymore. You? Me. Okay. And I said, oh, I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. I was not paying attention to that. I just, I couldn't participate in the conversation anymore. She goes on to say that for her daughters, 
entire life, anything from the belly Stop. button down mm -hmm. was referred to as her bottom. Oh. They never differentiated anything, anything under her belly button as anything other than your bottom. Oh, boy. So where do babies come That's from? Your confusing. bottom. Oh, if you have to boy. go to the bathroom, it comes from your bottom. Oh. When you get your period, it comes from your bottom. Mm. Right? And that this this girl through like the, the point before she went on for who the hell knows where would constantly just think that this was called her bottom. Oh, boy. And I guess at that point, I was like, good night, Irene. I'm oh, all out. And I must God. have turned. And I was like, this is why we have a sex ed problem yep. in this country, folks. Yep. This is incredible. So something about you just saying Tennessee. So what do I do? I immediately text message Melissa Kelly. Mm -hmm. And I said, you'd be losing your mind. Mm -hmm. my, my friend Melissa Kelly is basically sex ed for her life. Mm -hmm. She's been doing sex ed. She talks about sex ed with people all the time. I said, you would not have been able to participate in this conversation. Mm. How it was being talked about, how it was, be I'm like, what are we doing here? Scary. And then here's the thing. So that when she gets pregnant someday. Yep. I know. Right. And we're like, she's confused as I'll get out about how this happens at the age of 15, right? right. It's because no one educated her about her bottom. And she like, thinks she's going to shit out three years of corn. She thinks she <laughs> she thinks she's going to shit out three years of corn that God planted in her, you know, at some other point in life that she's hoping doesn't happen, but she just doesn't know. I need to go uh, knock on her door and say, hi, what? I'm God. I'm here to plant the seed. Come on, uh, folks. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's disgusting, Scott. Uh, my name's God. Uh, I'm a farmer. <laughs> Where's my hope? Okay? Oh my God! It's not okay. Oh. <laughs> it's not I love, okay. I love it's not making not fun okay. of ignorance. It's not okay. <laughs> not good. It's not. It's not good. I'm telling you. I'm telling you something. It's not okay, folks. But boy, could she play that banjo oh, oh, like the heavens, so like oh, angels. Oh, my God. I can't. I can't. I can't. I also can't understand why people <laughs> think if we use medical terms like penis and vagina. Oh, that where is, are my pearls? Or, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, that is going to mean our kids are buying the black worm like <laughs> i don't understand there's a fine line between I, calling it a penis and fetching the black worm but do you know what i mean like i i don't understand why that is so that's the taboo that's the, the, it's the classic theory that if you talk about it you're gonna think it into existence for people and you're gonna become obsessed people, i need to see a penis i need to see a penis i need to touch a penis i need to know what it looks like if like I, what if i say those words boom gonna want to be sexually active that's because all the people, gays want to make you gay say, if oh, any yeah, if right. anything if all i right. was told at six years old what a penis was i would want to be as far away from it as possible right correct Think people think this way about drugs. If you talk to people about safe consumption of alcohol, that means I, I need to do it. I need, be, I need to drink. You're 100 percent going out and doing that. that makes if no I talk sense to you to about me. people with gambling addiction, you're going to wonder, "Ooh, that's interesting." I'm going to test know? that water. I'm going to see how I can go over here. I'm going to test. I'm going to if, if I train you about how to use a condom, right. you're going to be like, I'm, a I'm gonna try, "I need to try it on all, all the sizes all, and shapes. I need to all say, day to pull down your pants. I need to see what you're packing all day. You know why? I mean, look at look at all of those preachers. Look at all those evangelical preachers that you know preach all this stuff and then one day they find him you know with a with a mexican uh young man in a motel six smoking meth and you know on a binge for six days having unprotected anal sex yeah because they don't know because they're that like oh my god I, everyone keeps talking about it i gotta try this right. yeah right I, I yeah it no happens so often sense i know i it's, do it's not incredible. understand it oh we uh, you know don't what let about, your daughter use a tampon she might want dick all the time yeah <laughs> 
That's okay. Give her, give her listen to me, That's Scott. Fine. You don't even need to wait for me to identify what the highlight clip is for this reel. I just need you to have Rebecca saying that. Just that statement. Just that statement. All of a sudden, Rebecca shows up, and then the clip comes on, and you're like, don't let your daughter use a tampon. She's going to want dick all the time. Boom. More love podcast. That's it. That's no other conversation. I mean, That's the clip. I mean, I know. I you don't, don't have to tell me. Understand. I think it's absolutely We're going to have to reinstate the subscription service. I do not service. understand. I know. It's absolutely <laughs> fascinating to me. I don't understand. Sawyer, Sawyer, I bought a bunch of peaches and I put them in the fruit bowl and she comes in and she goes, those look like butts. I go, yeah. what do you think people use the peach emoji on emojis for? She's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and then you followed it up with, you ever see the what? eggplant? <laughs> You ever see the eggplant, <laughs> Sawyer? But, I mean, I know. I, I know. I don't get it. I know. I don't get it. It's it's it was fascinating, but the fact that I just apparently completely shut down and I didn't even realize it. I was just like, "This is not okay." And then we go to walk away again. I am neurodivergent. I'm going to tell you what I think about it. We go to walk away, and I say, "I can't be around people who don't add value to conversations when they open their mouth." I know. Oh, I can't. God, you have isn't to add that the most some level of thing value. You've ever said. <laughs> Oh my Sorry. God! I can't. Be. I know that that's I, not where it's coming from, but holy! Why shit. does it sound elitist? Oh yeah, it does. Why? I have to walk away from someone who doesn't add value to this conversation. Her value was that everything below your your belly button was called the bottom. There is no value the there. Bigger, Can you prove wait, that wait, it's wait. not? No, the bigger kidding. concern is she's an active participant in the education system. I know. Oh God. That's the part that's scary. To me, I know. I do Ooh. not want that person having any conversation with my. Kid. Did you ask her how much she liked to kill a mockingbird? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that band book. We don't read that one. <laughs> I I can't. I can't. It's too, it's it's. Mm. You have you have to. Be, she was one of those people. You don't ever feel this way about people. She's one of those people oh, yeah. that every time they go to open their mouth and say something, you're like, this might be it. This might be the time where they're about to say something that I'm like, I, I took something from that. Never. And then you're just disappointed. You're like, oh, mm -hmm. that wasn't it. Well, oh, yeah. maybe it's this time. Nope. Not that I either. Almost, I almost had to work with one of those people. Joe, don't talk about Joe like that. <laughs> I can't hear you. Oh, <laughs> It's a good thing he can't hear you. Poor Joe. See, Where is he? Him? Can we see him? No, he's no. just outside oh, of frame. Oh, poor Joe. <laughs> but, <laughs> but my favorite No, it's a local is, radio person. Oh. Well, oh. my favorite is watching Aaron's face when she's near people like that. Because I'm just like, here's the show right here. Here's the show. It's going to be real good. And then <gasps> she'll follow up That's with- That's a great idea. I, I, yeah. I think we should have guests and shit that just- we ha we'll It's have guests the, that Aaron's face. The two-way mirror- you know, yes, where, yes. where, yeah, where you just you, like, there are many camera times with, with Aaron and a weirdo, uh, what, what, not a weirdo, just there. Well, you need to check her text messages if we're ever in certain meetings. And I'm like, you need to fix your face. Or I try to catch her and I'm like, or I send the private zoom, zoom thing. That's like, it's not it. It's not it. You got to read that I in. Can't, I, I can't am aware. do it. I'm just I'm so die, present in that moment. Dying. That I am like, this is, <laughs> this is not I don't it. Know. I'll teach you how to um, trick people on Zoom so where you can just play a clip of your face looking interested and, you know, okay. like that and yeah. just loop that. Yeah. And then you could be off camera going. Yeah. I'm going to. Yeah. Just like this. Smile. I'm going to have to. You remember that one time we had that one conversation? What the hell was that guy? Oh, the guy for the blood work guy. Oh, my God. I don't think we ever talked about this. Rebecca had a blood work consultation. I can't, and she I can't called even me, talk about it. She called me into this blood work consultation God, can with we her. Pref Wait, we need to preface that no one is going to believe the stories we tell about me and my medical. I know. And the only reason they're going to believe it is because you're a neurodivergent and you can't lie. I know. I can't lie about it. They'll know immediately. <laughs> I can't. We can't. You but you were like, hey, I got up. this meeting coming up at 1.30 to discuss my blood results. Would right. you come with me? Would because you, like you ask good questions Correct. is what you said. Correct. I said, oh, I'm absolutely happy to. And oh, the other thing with Rebecca, though, <laughs> one time she made me go to this one meeting. Which one? The one um, with the elimination diet. 
we went to this one place. She's like, oh, this is it. This is it right now. This is so great. I can't wait. This is going to be it. It was a hormone balance. We walk in there for this hormone balance. We both take this assessment. We get in there. We're sitting in separate chairs. The woman starts talking. Again, I can't fix my face because right. I'm, I'm. You're also a skeptic at heart. A hundred percent. Right. I'm not, I don't believe you for the first one quarter of your entire Correct. conversation. Correct. Right. Yes. And then maybe we'll get Good there. Yeah. But I, <laughs> that's how she is. I'm looking at this woman, like as she's starting to say these kind of things right. and, and I'm, I'm just assessing it hook, line and sinker. Here's Rebecca. I mean, rewind to when she told the, the LP that she didn't have shingles. Correct. <laughs> Again. <laughs> What if yeah. I did it? Yeah, I know. right. I know. But I'd you be know taking what? an antiviral. You right. know what? That is a smart approach to to medicine these days. I mean, to anything I in will, general. I skeptic. will say that most of uh, I don't I don't want to say this. A lot of times, mm-hmm. there's an agenda behind their diagnosis. Absolutely. Not and just it, not it's just medical. Conceived. It's and any it's, sort it's of sales it's, notions. It's funny it's like, you say that because sales tactics. you you know what got me over the hump of being like, okay, this a hundred percent isn't shingles before I even left the office. She said, my father recently had a cluster of dots on his head and starts to explain what his experience was. And I was like, right there. It's an over identification of acknowledgement that you just went through that experience. And now you're going to see that in other experiences. That is that's psychology all day. That's why we see higher rates of certain diagnoses in the mental health profession when certain things are happening in the environment. You start mm-hmm. to hear um, um, narcissism. Mm-hmm. Now you're starting to hear narcissism. Everyone must be narcissistic, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And now you start to hear about ADHD. Everybody's got ADHD, mm-hmm. right? And the reality is, yes, there's some education that comes from that, but mm-hmm. borderline personality is a great example of this. Not everyone who's just you know, a little bit difficult with boundaries or pushes the envelope or whatever has an actual personality disorder, right? But we learn these words and see them and then we start to see them all over the place. Well, it's not, a phenomenon we have to be aware of. Correct, but but the other component that would have, also that I went through it, she didn't ask any other person to come in to see you, mm-hmm. right? Right. It, call my guy what you want shingles in your eye yeah call my guy what you want he had two other nurses and another doctor come in and they did i mean it was a full body examination and there was he would show they showed me pictures they're like this is what's going to happen and it all made sense right yeah yeah you don't you know that's a that's a serious thing right but anyway so we go to the elimination (laughs) diet here's me the whole time i got my furrowed brow it's supposed to be a hormone balance sorry yes correct appointment correct and when then when it shifted and and so here's me you know skeptical this is interesting we talked about hormone balancing but we now we're talking about something very different and here's rebecca Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. right yeah oh this is great right Swipe, 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 <laughs> sign me up, sign me up. No, I'm ready. I didn't do it, but I'm ready to do it. So, right. This, this woman. And she's only talking to me. Now has shifted point. the conversation right. to being like, well, you know, you're going to cut out. And then the list of things you're cutting out. I mean, we're talking, you ain't even eating olive oil. Like oh, we no. are. We went down to uh, nothing. Right. Right. And so <laughs> at this point, she looks over at me and Rebecca feels it. So she's not looking at me. But no, the woman looks die. over and says, Erin, what are you thinking right now? And Rebecca's like, and I said, I actually have a lot of questions about what's happening right now. So I know we came in and we were going to talk about the hormone balancing. And I understand that there's a couple different oils that can be taken or whatever. But really, a lot of what you're talking about right now just seems like extreme calorie restriction Mm -hmm. and an elimination diet, which don't get me wrong, is great for a lot of people. But if we're paying for this. And it's just an elimination diet. I have some questions about what it is that we're doing. This woman realizes in this moment, That's right. she's not getting any further with this wall. So what does she do? Turns, Turns right, right to back to Rebecca. Yep. And she is just like a sales shark yep. is just in there. Well, Rebecca, you know, do you experience this? Right. Do you feel lethargic? Right. Do you whatever? Go right? all the things. And no, this woman doesn't know. Right. That it don't matter what you have to say, honey, because the minute we get in the car and I'm like, all done, shut it down, going to Chick-fil-A. Rebecca's like, okay, 
Right. Okay, that's what we're not going to do, right? So this one. No, in fact, I'm pretty sure you said that. I'm pretty sure you said, we're going to take a pause right here. Yeah. And we'll get back to you with our decision. That's what I said. <laughs> I did. And I'm like, and I, I feel can't. every part of you. You're just like, I just want to do it. I just want to do it so bad. I, know. I just want to do it. What was the price? I'm like $900, I think, I think $1,000. $1, yeah. $1, but she's like, don't worry, though. You can pay for it out of your HSA. Right. I can pay for it out of my asshole, and it still ain't going to happen. <laughs> okay? Because this is unreal. I know. I we know. get in the car, and then you're like, how do you think it went? <laughs> <laughs> I said, absolutely not. Absolutely. Well, uh, we're not paying a thousand dollars for an elimination diet. I said you have a thousand dollars to throw around. You give that shit to me, and I'll right. come over and be like, nope, 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 can't eat it. Not gonna eat it. Not gonna eat it. So then, fast forward to this blood work guy, to the blood work man. This again, just happened like two again, or three weeks ago. She calls me back on the call. Right. So we get on, and this guy is personality. Oh, dead Dead central. Dead and central. We can't tell at one point. I can't tell if it's frozen. If the computer froze or if he just lacked the ability to respond appropriately. Right. So I think I think I waved my arms at your face. <laughs> and that's, just when, that's when you moved and I <laughs> couldn't. I couldn't get it this together. This is one of my classic faces where I'm just like. <laughs> right. Or then I'm like. I'm like, it's like right. I'm like here's me waiting in anticipation. Uh, are you gonna say something else? Right, and, and you text me immediately. Stop it with <laughs> your face. I'm dying. Stop it with your face. I'm dying. So then he comes back on because right. it must have been. And I said I didn't know what happened there, sir. I said that. I didn't know if you just weren't responding or whatever. Because at some point, he was like, tell me about yourself, Rebecca. And you're like, you tell him this most beautiful story right. of yourself. And then he's like this. We couldn't. Know, that's that's when we didn't know if he was frozen or not, or socially weird. It was a whole weird thing, and that's your face. And I'm like, oh god, oh god, oh god. Remember? And so we eventually get through all of that, and then the girl comes on. The sales girl comes on. He keeps going. He keeps saying, right. So Rebecca, <laughs> do you feel good about going with the what was it? It was some peptide. Pep the peptides. The, and you said, well, I don't know. The meeting just started. Right. So I don't really know. You know, well, I'm definitely open to it. If you could tell me a little bit more, you know, and then he's like, so then we test your blood and we do this, we do that, and we do all these things. And so Rebecca, right. <laughs> would you be interested in going with the peptides today? And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's what you said. This is, uh, this is, uh, I'm getting punked. <laughs> I am getting punked right now. I know. <laughs> Am I getting dragged into now? I've had the elimination diet. I know. I've had the poster board with the guy who who my primary runs care. It, whatever time the primary care. Now I'm in here with Mister Sir, Sir Blood's a lot peptides. Sir Buzz, so then he gets off. The sales lady comes on and she's like, "What did she? He's, he's so she's, 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 she says." <laughs> She he says, well, now I'm going to have, you know, Susie over here come in. She's been on the call the whole time, but she's going to run through all the pricing information with you. And you can ask her any questions. And, you know, I put together this this whole plan for you right. where you can do this and this and this and all these things. And she's going to run through that. And so she brings it up. She'll come to me if there's any changes right. to the plan. Feel free to talk freely with her. Bye, girls. You know, <laughs> says goodbye. So she comes on and she's like, are we adding on the... The stem cell, the stem cell package, and um, and I know immediately what that is, but I see your face, and, and I he said, didn't talk about this. No, he did not. And I she, said I'm going to need some more information about the stem cell package. We've not seen any prices yet. We've not seen nothing, any prices. Nothing. So she's like, we got this, and we got this. You get the coaching. You get right. this. You get the peptides. Right. You get the and the blood results, the reviews, the coaching, and then would you guys be interested in adding on the stem cell treatment? What's that, ma'am? Right, and I'm dying because I know what it is. Scott, do you know what it is? What, stem cell? Stem Scott, cell, yeah. Scott, this is I mean, unhinged. I know what stem cells are, but I don't know how it relates to okay. this story. Well, because it's it's supposed to be a treatment plan because they did a full they did a full blood panel workup on me and saw where I was deficient, etc., and then gave it, it, an option of treatment. Let's just call it that. So you can grow a new pancreas or something. It ba basically, basically. So then she's like, well, are we adding on the, the stem cell package? And I'm like dying because her this is her face. And and I'm like, can, I go, Aaron, do you know what that is? And I go, isn't, and I jokingly said, 
Yeah, it's basically when you eat your placenta. <laughs> and, she, and Aaron's like, what? And she's like, well, kind of. She's and like, then this is how the woman explains it. <laughs> this is how she explains it. No joke, word for word. Right. Do you know the celebrities, you know, there's a lot of celebrities that do this stem cell, you know, stem replacement where they spend about $100,000. Mm-hmm. And what they do is they basically get recycled blood from other babies. Right. And then they flush out their blood and they recycle with it the, with, the, with umbilical the new cord. umbilical cord blood mm-hmm. from from all of these different babies. Hey, and it I costs say? about a $100,000, she says. But you know what? But we're not all, we're not all super, you know, Rich. celebrities right and so this is the program for people you know that are more like us the average the average folk we don't have the hundred thousand dollars to spend on that so instead of doing full-on blood transfusions we take some of the stem cells from the um the the, the placentas and the umbilical cords and the from people who have given birth from and don't people want who have given <laughs> given birth and have not kept their own, and then we're going to take that and we're going to infuse that into your own blood to stimulate more platelet and all whatever. That's a hell of a job. There's a guy making fifteen fifty an hour going from maternity ward to maternity ward. Hey, can I have your placenta? <laughs> so, so I'll give I you twenty say, bucks for it. So I say. What did I say? So you, what? So I'm gonna have to have Jerome's blood count in me. <laughs> and she goes, "What?" And I go, "Yeah, Jerome." So Jer- you're gonna take Jerome's umbilical cord from Jerome's mom, and Jerome's mom's like, "Yeah, sure, you can have it." And this is Aaron's face, and, and she <laughs> is dying. She's like, "What?" And Aaron's like, "I, I got to go through this." I said, "Did you just say?" Jerome. Yes. And you said, yeah. And I said, no, I need a minute. Right. Are we talking about other moms? Yes. And their babies? Yes. This is not like I kept my cord blood. This right. is, We're hey, taking it mom, for- are you going to use that? Right. Could I borrow Jerome's right. blood cell, whatever? This right. woman straight face says, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's what we do. I, my, here's my hands. Like I am getting stopped by the police. I said, ma'am, this is too damn much for me. This, this just put me right over the edge. No, we are not interested in that. Well, no, no, no. She, she goes, well, let me just share with you the pricing. And she goes in and she (laughs) changes the, the the name name from platelet, blood cell count, whatever. What does she call it? Jerome's. Jerome's Jerome. donation. Jerome's <laughs> donation. And then, you know, they show you at the very top, right. like the like, oh, this is how much this costs and that costs. And I'm like, scroll to the bottom. Right. Scroll all the way to the bottom. How much, how much was the package for three months? Thirty five thousand dollars. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> but then she's like, but we could take the stem cell transplant out and, and then it would only be what? fifteen. 20 yeah something dying dying at this point at this point i am like how do i get drawn in to these things with her I and think all that's, i in wanted fact, was i the think blood that's work. exactly what i said to you when we got <laughs> off the phone so you you basically very kindly say well i'm gonna have to think about it right. you know so i I'm will to review this with my husband I'll come back around you know to you but there ain't, ain't no way no way that this is happening. So the minute we get off the phone, I, I call you and you're like, why aren't you talking? I said, I, I need a minute right now. Number one, can you please stop bringing me into these conversations where we're doing I didn't think it was going to be hippie like that. View, hippie view medical I know. treatments for 35 grand. And then number two. I know. If ever anyone ever talks to me about some cord blood <laughs> infusion being infused into my own blood to help me create, I'm, I'm all done. Regenerative. I'm, uh, I'm, regenerative. That something. is yeah. unreal. And so then I'm like, so you mean to tell me that those celebrities, you know, paying a hundred grand, but you over here dropping 10 grand? It jokes on you guys, you know? <laughs> well, no, because it's, it's, um, it's probably... Instead of I'm, instead of drying you up like a raisin and putting knows? all new blood in you, adopted babies. Yeah, yeah, right. No, they're, yeah, they're probably, right. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, they, <laughs> these are third world babies. They're cheaper. That's right. I can't. 
I, she gets me in these things all the time. It, Next on more love, it's so fecal hilarious. transplants. It's oh hilarious. Well, that was that was one of the tests. The they fecal wanted, transplant. They, they asked her if she could please provide a, a sample. Fecal can sample. You, can you please shove your shit up in her ass? <laughs> well, make I her said, feel better. I said Aaron's gonna have to collect uh, it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so weird. Yeah. Yeah. For you or for me? I Cause, mean, because you listen, roll with this shit a lot easier than listen, I do. I we still would not, not have okay. any good stories unless oh, I put that you is in true. these circumstances. That is true. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I don't think I've ever thanked you properly for all of these opportunities. We didn't watch the video I wanted to watch today. Okay. We didn't talk about the Can thing. We do that I, no, we don't have any time. And no. I'm not playing this video because it's way too good. Scott and I have been laughing about it for weeks. It's yeah. the sweetest <clears throat> thing I've ever seen in my life. So it's going to have to be next all time. All right, well, as soon as we're done with this, we're watching all those Instagram oh, reels they sent you because yeah. they are yeah. they are things we cannot talk about on this podcast. Oh. <laughs> so read us read us your hippie vu and I'll take us out with you our, picked this. I did. This is the hanged man and okay. it's a frog hanging on okay. by a thread. Yep, hanging on by a thread. All right. Yep. Hmm. Sources say that you're in an impasse in some areas of your life, kind of like reaching a dead end of a maze. The best course of action is inaction. In other words, try not to keep walking into the same wall over and over again. Because, ouch, surrender, turn around and try a different path. This is the gift of THM's unended, upendedness, <clears throat> a completely fresh perspective. If you felt stuck or stagnant, the key might be looking at things with a brand new baby dinosaur eye. <laughs> Once you do, you'll soon be skipping through life's never ending maze again. It's so fun, right? I can't. Here's your affirmation I free myself of ego. And admit there's got to be a better way. I don't know what it is yet, but I bet when I find it, or but I bet I will find it. But I bet I will when I find it because, well, things will work out. Whatever. Scott, did you get any of that? I, I swear Just, to God. It's basically for saying... Someone, for someone who reads a lot of books, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> did you get any of that, Scott? I got... I seriously... I, 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 I can't. I just didn't. I didn't. She lost I don't me even a baby know. dinosaur. Oh, I, <laughs> I heard baby, baby dinosaur, dinosaur eye, but then the, after that, Surrender. I was like, turn around and try a different path. It's saying, don't keep, it don't saying? keep repeating the same thing over and over again if you're feeling stuck. Right, like going to doctor's appointments with your best friends. <laughs> yeah, and, we're, all, we're all done with that. I'm all, then, I'm all done yeah. seeking seeking anything. You know what the problem is? Lyme's disease. <laughs> that's Read right. the damn book. That's, that's right. That's the that's solution right. to everything. So um, this is what's going to take us out today. I know that I am the only person who can bring forth the creativity that lives in my body. I am magic. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Hear me roar. Oh, Canada! <laughs> I loved that. Me too. Isn't empathy amazing? Well, we're amazing. I don't know about all this empathy stuff. That's fine. I accept you wherever you are. Oh, God. I love you. I love you too. And if you love us, please like and subscribe to More Love, the Power of Empathy podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Mm-hmm.